In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, interest capitalization on self-constructed property planning equipment. Recall from uh, an earlier video uh, when we discussed the, uh, when I introduced property plan equipment, one of the things that um, we can do in accounting under US GAAP is if we are building our own property plan equipment, constructing our own property plan equipment, then one of the items that we can capitalize is interest on loans during that construction period. Okay, so that's what this is all about. When you're making your own asset, you can capitalize many items. Let me refresh here. Many items such as direct materials, direct labor, and reasonable overhead. And interest would fall under the overhead component. Okay, so let's talk in detail as to how this uh, works. First of all, in order for you to be able to capitalize interest, three requirements must be met. Okay, so the first one is, the first requirement that needs to be met is that you have expenditures that are being made during the construction period. Okay, so you cannot capitalize unless you've actually, you're actually spending money during that period. The other uh, requirement is that the necessary activities to get the asset ready are in progress. In other words, you're working towards the completion of that project. And then finally, and this one's kind of interesting, some type of interest is incurred. So what I mean by some type of interest is that the company doesn't necessarily have to have a specific construction loan. Uh, it could be other loans that it has. And because it has other loans out there outstanding, then that type of interest may be able to cap, maybe you may be able to capitalize that interest. Okay, so even though you're constructing your own property plan equipment and you are allowed to capitalize interest, it doesn't necessarily have to be interest from a loan related to the construction. And that's what this means. Okay. All right. So let's look at the rules themselves, how to go about it. Uh, here are the rules. And then uh, I'll follow up with an example here so you can see how we apply those rules. Okay. Here's the first thing. Two steps. The first step you need to do is compute weighted average expenditures. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, but for now, let's just take it as a given, okay? Basically, this is an average of what you spent during the period of construction. Then the next step, once you have your weighted average expenditures, is to compare two values and choose the lower of two values. So you're gonna compare your avoidable interest, which I'll talk about in a minute, and actual interest. So let's talk about actual interest first, since this is the easy one. Actual interest is whatever interest the company incurs during that construction period. So there's no crazy math to this, all right? Uh, this is just simply whatever loans you have outstanding times the interest rate for those loans, and that's your actual interest incurred. Now keep in mind, in the past, when you've discussed actual interest, you've always thought about interest expense being a debit and then credit cash, right? But now what we're saying is maybe some of that interest expense does not necessarily need to be expense. Now some of it may be able to be capitalized, right? And that's what we're trying to figure out. All right, so you're gonna compare your actual interest to avoidable interest. And avoidable interest is this amount in theory that you could have avoided if you had not started this construction endeavor. All right, what is avoidable interest? It's made up of two components. It's made up of construction interest and non-construction interest. And basically this is just this. Construction interest is any interest related to construction loans that you took out for that specific endeavor. So if you didn't take out any loans, you have no construction interest. Non-construction interest is just interest on any loan you have in the company. All right, so here's the way we compute this. You first start out with construction interest, and it's gonna be based on this weighted average expenditures. All right, so you're gonna take the weighted average expenditures times the construction rate. And if you see the subscript here with a C, that's to specify that this is the rate on your loans for construction debt. All right, now be careful because here's something you have to watch out for. You can, 
include as the base here, as the base here, you can include up to any amount of construction debt that you have. So if for some reason you have uh, weighted, uh, weighted average expenditures that are higher than the construction debt, then you limit it here to the construction debt. And you'll see that more clearly in the example we'll do here, okay? So just hang in there. Any remaining amounts that you don't account for in the construction interest line will be accounted for here in non-construction interest. Hence, look at the subtraction here. So this is weighted average expenditures, again, minus construction debt. So in other words, any values that were not up, used up here as a base will be used down here as a base. And you'll multiply those times the rate of non-construction loans. So you may have to do an average, a weighted average of the rates. Uh, same thing, same applies here. If you have several construction loans, you gotta do a weighted average of the rates, right? Before you do this computation. But normally you'll have one loan for the construction and then if you have non-construction loans, you might have a few. All right, let's put this into an example so that it, it, it make, makes a little bit more sense. So let me give you an, uh, uh, an example here where a company incurs $5.2 million to construct its own asset from the period 11X1 until 1231X1. Now, I'm simplifying a few things here just to give uh, uh, the illustration, but this here, which is uh, from January 1st until 1231, this is a full calendar year of the construction period, and that's very important because these rules on interest capitalization apply only during the construction period. So I am making it easier here because I'm saying, okay, here's a whole 12 month period where we have a construction period. And because of that, we consider the whole 12 months for purposes of interest cap capitalization. But I don't want to complicate this, but if for some reason it was less than 12 months, then you know, the period in which you can capitalize interest is only for that lesser period, okay? Don't take the whole calendar year if you're not in the construction period the whole year. Step number one, weighted average expenditures. Okay, so let me just give you this right now, and I'll go into details to how we would compute that later, but I don't want to mix up a whole bunch of concepts right now. So weighted average expenditures is 3.95 million. You're given this, thing, okay? This is the information. So here's a company who spent out of pocket $5.2 million, of which those 5.2 equal 3.95 million when we average them out, where we do the weighted average. And I'll show you in a minute how to do that. Don't worry about it right now. So my task is to go to number two, step number two, and compute the lower of avoidable or actual. I'm gonna start with actual again. Uh, you compute the interest based on all the loans that you have in that company for this period, for the construction period, and it ends up being $510,000. Okay, so that's just however you do your actual interest calculation. If it were not for uh, the potential for interest capitalization here, you would just simply expense the whole thing, the whole 510 during the period. But since we are during, we are involved in a construction period of, of a property plan equipment, self-constructed property plan equipment, then some of this may be able to cap, may be able to capitalize, or maybe even the full 510. All right, let's go ahead and compute avoidable interest. I'm gonna tell you that the company has a $2 million construction loan, okay? So this is just additional information for you that uh, I'm, I'm giving you as we go. So the company took out a $2 million loan to make this asset. So notice right here, even though my weighted average expenditures are 3.95, I can only put as the base for construction interest, the amount of loan that I have there. And that's what I mean by here, up to construction debt. So I'm gonna use 2 million here times the rate of 12%, and I'm making this up, but this is the rate for the construction loan, so that's 240,000. Now, you may ask, uh, well, we're not using the full 3.95 million. What happens to the rest? Well, the rest is used up right here for non-construction interest. So you'll take the 3.95 million, the whole amount, and subtract it by 
the construction debt, or in other words, the amount you already used as a base. And that gives you 1.95 million. Assume that the rate for non-construction uh, type loans is, uh, let, me, let me do this here real quick. Bear with me here. All right, assume that the rate for non-construction type loans is 10.38%. I did a weighted average of all the rates for different loans that I have, and it comes out to be 10.38%. Okay, when I do that interest computation, I get 202.410. Now, avoidable interest is the summation of these two things, right? Construction and non-construction interest. So when I sum these up, 240, and 202, I get 442,000, roughly, okay? The rules for interest capitalization dictate that you need to choose the lower of the two, and that's the amount that you can capitalize. So you compare 442 versus 510, and that right there is uh, indicating that, obviously, avoidable interest is lower. So what that means is out of this $510,000 that I'm actually paying in interest for the company, I can capitalize 442 of it as opposed to expense it. Okay, so let's see that in in here in uh, the accounting for it. At the end of the period, assume this is 1231. At the end of the period, you're going to capitalize the amounts that you actually paid to build or to construct this, right? This uh, asset. So I told you it was 5.2 million. Um, and then you're also going to capitalize the amount of interest that we just computed right here. So to the building, this is adding to the basis of the, or the book value of the, of the building, right? To the building, we're adding that 442. I know I have to pay interest of 510. That's just what it is. That's the actual amounts that I pay banks. So the difference is the amount that I expense. Traditionally, we didn't. We never had this option, right? Because whenever we incur interest, we just expense the whole thing. But here, what we're seeing is that because we are constructing our own property plan equipment, and because we are in the construction period, we can capitalize some of that interest incurred. All right, this gives me a total basis for the asset of 5.2 million plus 442. So it's these two right here. In other words, that's the cost of the asset. 5,642,000 roughly. So at the end of the year, if we're going to depreciate this asset, then I use this basis for computation of depreciation. So here's 5.6 million. I'm assuming a 30 year life here. Maybe it's a building. And that gives me 188,000 roughly of depreciation expense per period or per year. So a couple little things here. Um, the first one being, I did this journal entry here at the end of the year, uh, 1231. So a whole, it looks like a whole year passed before I recorded this information into the accounting system. Normally, this is done as you go, right? So maybe you're doing this analysis uh, monthly, quarterly, whatever the case may be. But per, for purposes of this illustration, you know, we're, we're just doing the whole thing for one year in one scoop right here. We know that we have to pay interest maybe monthly or something like that. So even monthly, you would be maybe doing these computations of the amount that gets capitalized. All right. Um, natural question here is, okay, so where does this weighted average expenditures come from, right? So let me give you an illustration of where this might arise, all right? So how did we get to that? So let me unblock this. So for this company, we said again that the construction period is from January 1st until 1231. All right, so that's a full 12 months. And when we do the weight for weighted average, that would, be go, that would go on the denominator here. Okay, so 
I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but for now, let's just assume this is a 12 because this is a 12 month construction period. Now, look at this number right here, the 5.2 million. This is the 5.2 million that I said we paid. So now I go in here and I give you the details of when we paid these amounts. So I tell you that on January 1st, at the beginning of this construction period, I paid 2.7 million. So the weight we would give that is, we would say, okay, this was outstanding 12 months out of the 12 month construction period, meaning it gets full weight, right? So the weighted average expenditure for 2.7 is 2.7. On the other hand, I made a payment of 2.5 million in the middle of the year on 630X1. So in other words, this payment was outstanding for only six months out of the 12 months construction period. So when I take this, I'm gonna take the 2.5 million and I'm gonna multiply it times this weight of six over 12 or half, right? And what I get is a weighted average expenditure of 1.25. I sum that up and that's what this is. So that's where this 3.95 million would be coming from. And this is the calculations that you would do to arrive at that weighted average expenditure. So this is not this is not complicated, but this is something that you, you know it's good to understand where these numbers are coming from. Um, a little note here. So again, I made this example somewhat uh, straightforward, given it twelve months. If for some reason the construction period, let's say, is from April first until 1231, then that would be nine month constru construction period, right? If that's the case, then your denominator here for the weight is going to be nine months. All right. And that is very important. Don't mess that up. So for this purpose, the weight I use 12 because the construction period was 12. But if it's less than 12 in a particular year, then you got to use that number of months down here to give it the proper weight. And it's all the, and then the denominator is going to be the number of months within the construction period. Don't go outside of the construction period. So it's all based on the construction period. And that's, that's something you got to be really careful about. We can capitalize interest during the construction period. And that dictates what uh, these weights will be. All right, this concludes the video on interest on self-constructed assets.